Hey guys, happy spooky month. In this video to do October justice, we are making a big spooky mansion for our 100 baby challenge. I had a lot of different thoughts of where I wanted to go for this, but the biggest thing is I was really inspired by the new storybook nursery kit. That kind of goth energy really wanted me to make a proper mansion with a proper nursery. So that's where this all started. It kind of got off the wheels a little bit, but oh well. To start with, you see me doing the stairs. I really wanted a cool grandiose staircase leading up into the mansion, but I was kind of being limited by the Sims. We don't have spiral staircases. We don't even have curved staircases. I thought about doing the staircase on a diagonal, but I really wanted it to kind of get wider as it went towards the base. So I decided for some reason to make a custom staircase using platforms. Now, unfortunately, what this means is that the entire first floor is on a platform. Like every single room individually is set to a height of four. I kind of hate that I had to do that. I much rather would have done a foundation and then kind of made the platforms go lower until it hit the floor, but I tried that and it didn't work. So here we are. The other thing that was really important to me in this build was these kind of witches towers out front. I played around with them a little at the beginning, debating if I wanted it to be symmetrical, if I wanted them to be different heights, where I wanted them placed, and eventually I kind of liked this. It very much gave castle vibes in the front, but it gives more home vibes in the back. It's kind of a weird shape, not gonna lie, but I like it a lot. This is also a good time to mention that we're building this in Forgotten Hollow. I never play in this world for any long amount of time. I know I'm currently playing in this world for the Grim Awards challenge, but like, ignore that. Otherwise, I don't really play in this world. But I thought it would be really appropriate for the vibes. I want all of my 100 Baby Challenge episodes in October to be a bit more on the spooky side, especially since next episode is going to be Harvest Fest. I know it's technically like Thanksgiving, which is technically after Halloween, but like it's fall. We can do some fun decorations. And I just wanted to do something a little bit different than like all of our previous builds. So now I'm going through and adding columns to all of the corners on the build, which honestly, I'm not sure what style inspired that. It kind of made it look a little Tudor vibes, but it's fine. And then I wasn't sure for a color scheme. I really liked this red door from Vampires at that deep maroon, but there wasn't really any windows that matched super well. So after a lot of searching, which lucky for you, I've cut out, I decided to go with the Realm of Magic window and door set. Using that big round window as kind of a center piece and then using that smaller rectangular window like everywhere kind of like stained glass with a couple of accents here and there and I think it came out really good I wasn't really going for a purple scheme initially but I'm not mad about it now it's time to work on the inside I wasn't fully done with all of the windows on the outside but I needed to have an idea of my floor plan before I went full commit to putting windows outside so that's what we're doing now I went back and forth a ton on where to put the stairs and finally settled on this kind of v shape right when you walk in through this one tile hallway into this room that initially I was gonna make a dining room but but then I kind of repurposed it for a skill building room because I put the dining room elsewhere. Then to the right here, I have the beginnings of a kitchen. And I wasn't exactly sure what appliances I wanted to use. Realm of Magic and Vampires come with kind of an old timey wooden stove, but I just don't really love them. So I went with the stove from Cottage Living instead, but I used the cabinets from Realm of Magic, which I don't usually do. With the bottom floor plan established a little bit more, I went through and added windows and then realized that this room is way better served as an activity room than a dining room. So I put in Shasha's easel because that's our main source of income. I put in a Jenga table for the kids to play with, put in a boxing thing because I like to have some way of fitness for the kids. And I put a cat tree because in case you didn't know, we have a cat in this 100 baby challenge. She's not one of the babies. I just like having her around. Back to the kitchen, I curved out the counters to give us some bar stool space, and then I went through to the floor and walls. I went with a very classic orange and black Halloween theme, because we have that lovely orange and black tile from Vampires that just really sets the tone. And then in that same vein, I did this black stone for the wallpaper everywhere else, as well as a kind of orangey wood, but a bit more subtle, flooring everywhere else. Now, I didn't think I was going to have room for a full living room, so I decided to put a little cubby here and made it a bit more purple to match the windows and such. I ended up having room for a full living room later so this area gets completely deleted but I just thought it was so cute I wanted to show it to you guys and here's where I remember that I want better lights than just the subtle saucers the subtle saucers are really good for kind of filling in the room if there's not a lot of light but especially in a fancy mansion like this you want your statement chandeliers so I tried to remember those a little bit more finally moving on to the floor plan upstairs I kind of overestimated how much room I had up here because I wanted to have Shasha's bedroom a full nursery and the kids rooms and two bathrooms I don't know why I I thought I could fit that. Especially since at this point, I didn't have any bathrooms yet downstairs. I do end up adding a half bath downstairs because it was just way too small of a space for everything I wanted upstairs, but there is no shower in this house. I straight up did not have room for a shower. That's insane. I mean, I guess I have a tub, so I could have done like a shower tub combo where the tub is, but I really wanted to do an old timey tub. So you know what? It's for aesthetic over functionality. What's also truly insane about this part of the build is that you have to go through the bathroom to get to Shasha's room and the nursery. I just made this part of the build way 
too skinny. There was no room for hallways. Also, I meant to say this earlier, but part of the issue with Shasha's room as well is because she has to be able to woohoo in her bed, she has to have almost a full tile on either side of her bed. So it was really limited in like what wall I could put it on because I couldn't just like squish it into a corner. It had to like have room. So that made it more challenging. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure why that's still a requirement because you can scoot up the full-sized bed up against a wall and like two people can still get in it. Like one person will get in from one side, scoot over, and then the other person can get in. But if you try and woohoo in a bed that's up against the wall like that, it won't work. Even if you already have the two sims in the bed first, they'll get out and then complain about not being able to get in the bed. It's really annoying, especially in a challenge like this that has so much woohoo. But enough about that, here's the kids room. My initial thought is that this room would be for the kids and teens, although later I end up having to add in toddler stuff because I made the nursery way too small. But in that little corner of the witch's tower, I gave them the Django table from downstairs and I end up putting something else down there later. And then I gave them this long table for them to do their homework at, as well as four total bunk beds. Now again, going with the theme of the windows, I wanted to have a lot of purples in here, but those Halloween lights only come in the skull and pumpkin swatches, and I really liked those. So I knew I needed some orange in here, and I accomplished that with a bit of an accent wall. And I was a little nervous about that at first, how orange and purple would look together, but I really like it. I think it complements itself really well. So when I was building this, I took a little pause here to call my boyfriend and his friends, because they like play together on Discord pretty much every night. So I called them because I wanted to show them my build so far. I was really proud of it. And they thought it was cool, but my boyfriend was like, it'd be epic if like death was just walking around at all times. And I was like, you know what we have now? We have a speaker that can summon the Grim Reaper. And so immediately I knew I had to add that in the build. There was this wall downstairs that was blank and I didn't really know what to put on it. So I was like, for sure, I can just put like a fancy table here or something and then put the Grimophone on there. And it came out perfect. My one grievance though, is that the Grimophone doesn't slot to very much. Like it doesn't slot to shelves. It doesn't slot to the accent tables. The only thing I've gotten it to slot to is dining tables, which isn't usually where I want to put the Grimophone. And even you can't do your usual move objects thing with the nine key, because for some reason, when you raise it up with the nine key, it goes either right above or right below the level that most tables are at. So you either have to have it clipping or floating. And it's really annoying because like that kind of thing you would usually fix by just putting it on a shelf and then alt placing to get the shelf right where you want and then moving the item off the shelf, but it stays at the same height. But because it doesn't slot to a shelf, you can't do that. So genuinely, I was not sure what I was supposed to do here. It was so irritating. I ended up going with the clipping option because I hate when it's floating. And you probably wouldn't even notice if I hadn't mentioned it, but my goodness, that was so irritating. Also, a lot has happened since I started that rant. So remember how I said I built that living room nook and then I totally got rid of it later? Here's where I got rid of it. I realized that I had room for a full-size living room, so I did that with a really big bookcase that engulfed the TV that I thought was cool. And then I decided that the place where the living room nook was would actually be really good for a dining room because I still didn't actually have one of those. I had kind of been intending on using the booths in the kitchen as like the dining room because to be honest, your Sims don't ever really use it. But it's nice sometimes, especially with Harvest Fest coming up to have most of your Sims being able to sit at a table. So I kind of swapped the spaces around like that. Also, you may have noticed the toddler tent suddenly jumped into the hallway. That's because I spent 20 real life minutes looking for that stupid little hutch that I put in the dining room. And in the meantime, came across the toddler tent and was like, oh right, I want to remember that. We end up putting it in a better spot later. Also, I think I forgot to mention, I put a seance table in the witch's tower next to the living room. That also ends up having to get moved, but it was cool while it lasted. I went for a purple color scheme again in the living room and I wanted to use this Realm of Magic rug, but it just wasn't quite fitting how I liked. So I got rid of it and replaced it with a rug from, I think werewolves. Wait, no, it's the paranormal stuff pack. That's what it was from. And then I added this half wall to kind of divide the room from the rest of everything. And I also added a piano for like a different skill building item than we usually have. Plus pianos just feel like they belong in big fancy mansions. It was at this point I knew that I had to move the big seance table because I needed room for the toddler tent. So I put it there and then made it a much smaller little seance setup in the corner. So we still have it if anyone wants to talk to the spirits, but like I needed that toddler tent. It's so essential for the imagination skill. Now at this point, we're almost done with the build. There was still some awkward space over by the piano toddler tent area and I was thinking I could put more toddler toys there but ideally I wanted those in the nursery so I thought I should finish the upstairs first to make sure everything was gonna fit how I wanted it, and even see if I had enough room for the toddler stuff I wanted to put up there. Spoiler alert I didn't. Oh I also tiled the bathrooms and I used this kind of orange yellow and purple swatch from Parenthood that I never use because it always just looks bad but somehow it fit perfectly with the color scheme I've been using so far so that was amazing. Top tier find. Now Shasha's room is pretty small so I kind of just put the essentials, some nightstands, some lamps, and then a little ottoman at the end of the table, which I guess none of those are really essential, but also none of them take up all that much space. But like, she doesn't have a dresser, so I feel a little bad about that. But then it's the time we've all been waiting for! 
the nursery with the new nursery kit. Man, I was so excited. So first things first, I didn't even know this kit came with a wallpaper. So that was a pleasant surprise. It doesn't, however, come with a flooring. So I spent some time trying to find a flooring that would match. And then it kind of has a couple predetermined color schemes. Like it has a lot of pink swatches, has a lot of blue swatches, has a lot of kind of cream swatches, but they were sort of mixed and matched in an odd way. Like a lot of the pink swatches had blue in them, which wasn't really the vibe I was going for. I wanted much more of a pink, dark red and cream vibe, but eventually there was just so much blue that if I actually wanted to use all of the stuff from the kit, I kind of had to embrace it. There's also a lot of greens in the kit, so I kind of transitioned into a red, blue, and green palette. Very pastel. And I like it. It came out good. That was a good switch. There was not enough room for the toddler stuff. There wasn't even enough room for the toddler beds, let alone the toddler skill building items. So I put two toddler beds in the kids' room and then put a lot of skill building items downstairs for the toddlers. So overall, the kit was a bit more difficult to build with than I expected because the color schemes that sort of came with the items didn't really match my personal style. But once I let go of that and kind of went in the direction that it wanted me to go in, I had a much better time and I think the result's pretty cute. Plus I think there's a lot of items that match well with other things in the game. So if I wanted to use other items instead of strictly using the new kit, I think I would have had a lot more success with my original visioned color scheme, but I really wanted to use the new items. So here we are. Lastly, I'm going through and making sure everything looks well lit, even at night, because it's kind of hard to tell during the daytime with just the sheer number of windows. I added some terrain paint. I added some planner boxes in the back, just a bunch of final touches. I hope you liked this build and I hope that you tune in to see my 100 baby challenge where I play in this build. And I'm really looking forward to it. As always, I hope you have a lovely day and thank you so much for watching. Bye!